everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial, and today we are painting Vulcan Histan, the Forge Master of the Salamanders? That's what I want to say, I think. <laughs> yes, we are going to be painting him today. We're still on our retro hammer kick, and well, without further ado, we're going to jump in and start painting him. Now, he has been primed in grey seer. And the colour we're going to be starting with is Warp Lightning. And this is going to be for all of his green armour. So what we want to do is we just want to load up that brush. And then we just want to start painting it all over all of the green armour panels. And this is basically all over his body. But as you Salamander fans out there will know, we're not going to be painting this over the top of the backpack. That in fact is going to be black as is tradition for the salamanders. So with that warp lightning applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna create a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and warp lightning. And we're gonna do another layer over the top of all of our armor. And this is just gonna give us that absolutely cracking, lovely emerald green that the salamanders have. Now, the contrast medium is in there to, one, improve the flow, but also just thin it down just a little bit. Because if we do a pure layer of warp lightning here, it'll actually come out just a little too dark. So we just want to just take the edge off it just a tad just like I've done here and as you can see it's already looking pretty awesome just like this so you just want to go all over just like before just being careful watching for pools sticking towards the tip of the brush and then once that's done we'll come back So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red and we're going to use this on all of the scales. Don't worry about doing any highlighting just yet. We're going to do all of that towards the end. So as I say, we're going to be taking some Flesh Terrors Red. We're going to be painting this all over all of our Drake scales, just like this. Now we've got a good pile of them just here on his tabard, but of course his cloak is absolutely covered in them. So do just... Make sure you do both details, or both sets of details, I should say. Just be a little bit careful once you get close to all that green armor. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna work on all of the black details. This is going to include areas like the belt, the shoulder pad that you can see just poking through, as well as his gauntlet and the backpack and any other areas that you want to be black. So we're going to be using some Basilicanum Grey here, and this is going to act as our pre-shade for when we come to do the black rather shortly. Now it doesn't matter too much if we do get this Basilicanum Grey over the top of some of these other details. They are going to be metallic, so we'll be able to cover over them nice and easily. So that basilicum grey applied to all of these details. What we're now going to do is going to take some black templar 
And we're gonna go over the top. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some apothecary white. I'm going to paint this all over the top of this, well, cloak. <laughs> Don't know why that word was so hard to come to me. You just want to get this all over. Just like this. So with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take some Saigor Brown. I'm going to use this to paint in the leather details. So for example, the gun holster just here, and there's another pouch, or it might be even be another holster on his other hip. So with that done, as you can probably tell, I've actually added a couple of bit of extra areas of Black Templar, and this is because, well, I forgot to do them the first time round. So we've done this on the soft grips on the spear and on this little ribbed wire just here. But what we are gonna do next is we're gonna use three colors. We're gonna use this to do all the flaming bits. And this is gonna be the bit bottom of the cloak and the flame. <laughs> at the top there. Now the three colours we're going to be using are Yandan Yellow, Blood Angels Red and Black Templar and well the application is quite different for both. Well similar but different. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a Yandan Yellow and on the top here what we're going to do is we're just going to coat this Yandan Yellow all over like this trying to get a nice even coat. We're not too fussed about it kind of being a little bit pooly, because we can sort that out in just a minute. Just like that. Then what we're gonna do is wash the brush, grab some Blood Angels Red, and then whilst it's still wet, just across the kind of air, like raised areas in the flames, we're just gonna add some of this Blood Angels Red like this. Like that, wash the brush, grab just a little bit more Blood Angels Red. And add it in. Then we're gonna grab a little bit of Black Templar and just towards the tips, just wanna add a little bit of it like this. And then finally, wash the brush one more time, grab some yand and yellow, and use this to kind of just sort of almost blend those colors all together. Just like that. I'm gonna do that on both sides. But what we're also going to do is down here on the cloak is we're going to take some and yellow. We want to paint this all over the hem.
like that. Then we wash the brush. Then we grab a little bit of black Blood Angels Red. And then just towards the tips of each of the flames, we're just gonna add it again. Trying to do the same thing as we did on the back there. I don't want this to be like a really strong red color. And then what we do, wash the brush one more time, grab some black Templar, and then just towards the tips, some of the flames, not all of them. I'm just gonna add it in, like that. Then we once more, wash the brush and grab some yand and yellow. Just use that to kind of blend it all together. So you can add as much or as little of these colors in now as you like to your taste. So with that done, you should have a Vulcan Histan that is looking somewhat like this. It's looking pretty good. However, that cloak flame effect at the hem of the cloak has a sort of magmary, rocky feel to it as well. So that's what we're gonna add now. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some black Templar. And we're just gonna use very small amounts of this as we go. But what we wanna do is we wanna just basically Draw on lots of little sort of cracks. By just creating some odd shaped stone like Blobs. Just leaving some of that yellow shining through like this. We want to go all the way across it and sometimes it might take a couple of coats. So do just make sure you get a nice strong colour on these black blobs like I'm doing here. So with that done, you should have this beautiful looking bottom of the cloak with this kind of sort of scaly magmary type sort of hem, but don't worry about kind of neatening it up or doing anything else to it just yet. We're gonna do again, all of that towards the end. Now, the next paint we're gonna be using is Skeleton Horde, and this is gonna be for both of our purity seals. So we've got one here like this. And we've got one here at the belt as well, like that. And with that skeleton horde applied, we then take some Blood Angels Red. We add this to the little wax seals. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Rune Lord Brass. I'm gonna use this to paint in all of his sort of, well, Brassy details. So this is going to include all the areas like the ornate trim, the heat shield of his weapon, decorative parts of the spear, and anywhere else that you want to be this colour. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down lead belcher. I'm going to use this to paint in what is effectively all of our remaining details, except for the spear blade itself. Because that is again another fiery thing, which I hadn't realised until I just looked at the box art. 
or product photography, I should say. So, you just want to go around like this with the lead belcher, colouring all the details that you want to be silver, and anything that remains, and then we'll come back. So with that lead belcher all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Dark Angels Green. I'm going to paint this over the top of the laurel on his backpack. And next up, I'm going to use some Flesh Terrors Red to paint in our smooth cables. Like so. So with that done, all of our base coats are pretty much there. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna paint in the blade. Now the color we're gonna be using for this first is Griffhound Orange. All we wanna do, is just wanna get some of our brush, get a nice smooth coat of it all the way along the blade. Just like that. Now we wanna leave this to dry about 10, 15 minutes before we move on to the next stage. So with that Griffhound Orange applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some Flesh Terrors Red. I'm gonna apply this over the tip of the blade and then we're gonna kind of blend it together. So what we wanna do is do around about halfway. So around about there, just at the top of where that node is. What we want to do is just want to get the flesh toes red on there, just like that. Get it nice and smooth, wash the brush, and then where that transition happens, we're just going to, with a clean brush, smooth it out just that little bit. Just like that. And so with that done, we're then gonna do pretty much the same thing again, only this time with some Black Templar. And we're gonna do it about halfway along the uh, Flesh Terror's Red. So kind of to around about there where it starts to curve. I'm just gonna take that Black Templar, take it past there just a little bit like that. Let me wash the brush and then we smooth it out. So with that done, it is now time to add some shades to the model. Now the one we're gonna be using first is Dark Oath Flesh, and this is gonna be over the top of all of our Rune Lord brassy areas. So for example, just there on the knee, like that. And you just wanna get this all over. Just like that. And with that done, we're then gonna take some Basilicanum Gray. I'm gonna use this to shade all the silver.
So with that done, our last shade is gonna be on that cloak. Now the color we're gonna make is a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this on our brush. And we're just gonna paint this all over the white sections. And this is just to give it that slightly more kind of fleshy appeal over the top of that apothecary white. Don't worry if it looks a little dirty because we are going to fix it. But it's just going to change the complexion of that cloak just a little bit. Like that. What we can also do, should we choose to, we can use this around the scales as well. You don't have to do it all over, but it does just create a little bit of variation in the cloak. So for example, just around here, just add a little bit of it. So with that done, all of our base coats and shades are now on on Vulcan Histan. So all that's left to do is to add the highlights. Now we're going to go right back to the beginning. I'm going to start working all that green. And the color we're going to be using first for this is Moot Green. So we've got some thin down here on the palette. What we're going to do is we're just going to start picking out all of the edges on all of the green details. Just like this. And what we can also do is use this mood green to highlight the aquilas or laurels, I should say, on his back, on his backpack. For now, we're just going to work our way up the model with the mood green. Just like this. So with that moot green applied, what we then do is we take some Krieg Khaki. I'm going to use this to supply quite a cold spot highlight for the sharpest points. On the model, so we're just picking out the corners. Of the armor. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thin down Canoptic Alloy. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our brassy areas. Just like this, picking out the edges. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some iron hand steel. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of our silver details. So with that done, all of our metallics are pretty much finished and they look absolutely cracking. Nice and ornate, but also at the same time functional and deadly. I've also ran a little bit of that iron hand steel along the power nodes, I forgot to mention that, and that's important for later. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on and we're gonna deal with the inside of the cloak. Now the color we're gonna be using is Pallid Witch Flush. And all we wanna do is we wanna load up our brush here 
some thin down on our palette. We just want to start painting this pretty much all over the cloak, just avoiding any of the deepest recesses where our two contrast paints have settled. Just like this. Now it might take a couple of passes, but that's okay. Just make sure you get a nice smooth coat of this all over. So with that pallid witch flesh applied, what I've also done is I've used it to highlight the white details, so for example, the salamander icon here on the belt, the salamander icon just here on the arm, and these long kind of fabric trails just here, as well as all of the purity seals. And this is just to speed things up, but also because it is an entirely appropriate highlight for all of those areas, and it looks absolutely awesome. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to take some Uriel Yellow. I'm going to thin this down just a little bit more than we normally would. I'm going to use really tiny amounts of it here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to draw in some lightning that kind of fades into the black. So this is mostly across this kind of area towards the base of the spear blade. So what we want to do is we just want to take these very tiny, tiny amount on our brush. And we just want to start drawing these little Uriel Yellow lines like this, going to around about there, so that the spear blade towards the tip remains black. We just want tiny, tiny amounts, because what we basically want to happen is we don't want it to be too much of a vibrant yellow. This also gives us tons and tons of control. So that Uriel Yellow applied to the spear tip. We've also highlighted the sharp cutting edges of the blade. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some Dawn Yellow. I'm gonna apply this firstly to our eye lenses. Like this. What we're also going to do is going to use this dawn yellow as a little high spot highlight wherever any of our lightning trails intersect with each other. Just adding a little dot here and there. Not too many. Like that. And we're also going to add some of the highlight towards the base of the spear. Like so. One thing I forgot to mention is that on the cloak, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of Dawn Yellow in between some of our little scales that we freehanded on earlier. Just like this, not many at all. Just to give it that little bit of extra variation. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna use some Yandan Yellow. And we're gonna take this Yandan Yellow and along the kind of spear blade, along the edge, we're gonna add it towards the tip. like that, a little bit there on the flat, we don't want that. We're gonna add some of it around here, around the kind of central tang, 
of the blade. Like that. And we're also going to add this over the top of our eye lenses. You just want to drop a whole load of it in there. Basically, got a little bit too much there in that second one. I'm just going to wash the brush. And just with a clean brush, just going to lift some of it off like that. You can do the same thing just there, like so. And so with that done, what we then do is we take some Dawnstone. I'm going to apply this to the very tip of the blade. Like that. And like that. Take a little bit of it off. I'm going to do the kind of central tang as well. Like so. And we're also going to use this Dawnstone to highlight all of our black details whilst we've got it. And with that done, we then take some administratum gray. We just add this towards the tip of the spear. Just like that. With that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Dawn Yellow once again. I'm going to use this just to highlight his eye lenses. Like that, just to create a little bit of a shine to them. So with that, what we're going to do now is move on. To painting in all the scales or at least highlighting them and it's very simple what we're going to do is we're going to do a little dry brush of Cadian flesh tone we're just going to be very gentle here over the top like this and you don't need to catch all of them just enough particularly around these large ones just here on the shoulder and around here just enough to once again just create that little bit of variation Here on the front, just do a little bit just there, right in the middle. It's nice and easy to get to. Like that. Still sticking with the Cadian flesh tone, I'm just gonna add a little highlight like this to our remaining red details. We didn't pick up with the dry brush. So for example, these purity seals like that. We can add a little bit more around here. Across the shoulder if we want to. Just like that. So with that done, we then take some Achillean green. I'm gonna add this over the top of our large lens. Just there. Like that. Nice and simple. So with that Achillean green applied, we then take a diddy amount of Baharos blue. And we add this as a little highlight. Like that. With that Baharos blue applied, take a little dot of Corax white and we add this in the opposite corner like that. And then we're also going to add this in the back corner of each of our eye 
lenses just like this. And so with that done, our finishing touch is to take a diddy amount of wildwood. I'm going to use this to apply some little writing to the long trails. We're just on the tip of using the tip of our brush with the wildwood. We're just going to add these little squiggly lines. And so with the base complete, Vulcan Histan is now finished. Ready to, well, lay waste to the Emperor's foes in the name of humanity. In as humanely a way as possible. <laughs> Classic salamanders. They are really, really fun to paint and Vulcan Histan is no exception. Despite the fact that his fine cast, I actually quite enjoyed this. The spear's a little bit wobbly, but... As far as models go, it's pretty good for fine cast. Really good fun, and I hope you enjoy it, Sven. I really do. Hope you like it. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.